Hello. Uh, we are continuing to uh, deliver the lectures on the ethnosociology. And today we are going to speak about post society. Uh, in the previous lectures, we observed different stages of the ethnic society from the purest and simplest forms of the ethnos through people's form of social organization, traditional society with social stratification. After that, uh, second derivative of the ethnos identified by us in the national society, national statehood. And the last lecture uh, was dedicated to the civil society, post-national society, and uh, global society, based uniquely on the individual identity. It seems that we have arrived logically, if not historically, because we are living precisely in the moment of the final transition from the national identity to the global uh, society, so to the absolutization of the individual identity. But theoretically, logically, we, ar we arrived to the final point. So we have considered any possibility of the social identity uh, from the uh, ethnic, collective and organic uh, to up to the individual identity. It seems that we have exhausted uh, all possible uh, choices of the identity. But uh, we could uh, theoretically transcend the limits of the uh, global liberal and civil society and to, uh, to look forward beyond uh, the borders of this society that is not yet fully realized in the reality. So we could uh, think something other, something beyond what is going on. We could consider, for example, the creation of global society as accomplished fact instead of, uh, of, of the cons uh, consideration that it is not fully accomplished, but we could recognize that it is something that should be done in some time. Uh, but we could also to ask, what else? Uh, can we make a new step beyond uh, the frame of the global society based on, exclusively on the individual identity? So we have postmodern, postmodernist doctrines and uh, philosophical constructions that theoretically think about what else could we imagine after the final victory of the bourgeois civilization um, that is becoming global, universal, and the only one in the earth. So what next? What next? So this is no more than theoretical construction, but we could also call that a fourth derivative of the ethnos. So what is a society that we could count as fourth derivative of the ethnos? So, if global society is based on the individual identity, so 
the next step, logically, if we consider the main direction of the involution of the identity uh, and the ethno-sociological vision of the historic process. So we could call it approximately as post-society. So after global society, based on the individual identity, should logically follow or could logically follow post society and continuation continue, continuing the idea of the involution that should be um, society or post society based on the post individual identity but what is what could be this post individual identity where not only any kind of collective identity is uh, overcome uh, and now the individual identity should be uh, also uh, overcome. So it is a kind of destruction of the individual as normative unit. Precisely in the manner as precedent, identities were destroyed by the process of the involution. So, we have told in the last lecture that in the global civil society, the individual accept on himself uh, or accept individual accepts the burden of the society of the ethnos uh, individual becomes ethnic unit but he represent the whole ethnos one individual one ethnos one individual one society one individual one whole not a part of something but unit is absolutely self-sufficient and sovereign that is a concept of sovereign individual that is autosufficient in any senses precisely as the ethnic society or traditional society were considered to be autosufficient or nation uh, state was considered also to be autosufficient in the previous historic stages. So, the individual in the third derivative, in the, in the stage of the third derivative of the ethnos, was considered precisely as autosufficient as ethnos, the people or nation were before this ethnosociological state. So, if we continue, if we prolong uh, the same attitude uh, beyond the limits of the individual, but not outside of individual, but inside of the individual, we could consider individual to be nothing more than concept. The concept, social concept, or, or socially imposed identity that also presupposes a kind of agglomeration of different parts and its hierarchy. For example, we consider the, the, the brain as a kind of ruler of the individual. We consider normative individual as rational entity. And we, considered, we consider that uh, feelings or emotions should uh, be ruled 
by the brain, by the rationality. And so uh, the body should follow the orders of uh, the brain. So we could consider the individual with its body, in its, with, with its brain, with its heart, with its different function and organs of the body, a kind of empire, a kind of society, a kind of state, a kind of uh, collective organization with clear uh, social stratification because the brain is above and the body or sexual impulses are beneath, are, uh, um, under the pressure from the highest uh, instances in uh, its uh, in this um, organization. So we are dealing with an image of the traditional or national or ethnic society, uh, the individual as a final point of involution of the society conserves many important features from uh, the previous for, uh, kinds of identities and uh, they become inner uh, hi hi hierarchies, uh, but before they were external. So individual uh, is liberated from uh, the external hierarchies and interiorizes these hierarchies inside of himself. So it is very paradoxical conclusion. Individual is completely free from the society in the global civil society from the other. He is given to himself. He is completely, he is considered normatively completely autosufficient. He is completely free. But being completely free from the external obstacles or external in, uh, instances that should dictate to him what is good or what is bad, what is uh, higher and what is lower, what is um, possible, what is prohibited, it is all right with that. But finally, being alone, being at its own disposition, he discovers that the same situation of the hierarchy, of the rule, of the dictatorship, is repeated on the microcosmical level. So individual becomes uh, a kind of hier uh, hierarchical, traditional, or maybe totalitarian or authoritarian state. So he is free from the external uh, limits and rulers, but now he discovers that the ruler and the king and the oppressor and the dictator and the authoritarian ruler, the king, is inside of uh, himself. So the brain is a kind of junta, a kind of politburo, a kind of uh, leaders or bosses of National Socialist Party that um, have taken power over the whole um, population of uh, the um, individual uh, as a kind of new land, new discovered land. And this uh, authoritarian instance tries to dictate what is good and what is bad, what is highest and what is lowest. So the situation is repeated. And the freedom gained by individual in the course of the historic involution becomes also a kind of slavery, new kind of slavery, a new kind of dictatorship. That is first conclusion of the postmodernist attitude to individual. And 
the logical solution of that is to free, liberate individual from the individual. So we should come to concept, new concept of the individual, not individual, individual. Individual in Latin means something that could not be separated, could not be divided. But individual is something that could be divided. So, for example, when we discover in the um, classical physics subatomic level, from etymological point of view, it is a kind of contradiction because the atom in Greek is something that we could not divide. Uh, if we have something subatomic, that that means directly that atom is not atom. Individual is not anymore individual if we could divide it. If it is individual, so it is a completely different entity. And if we consider individual to be hidden individual, so uh, if we could recognize the existing of sub-individual entity, we could logically continue the process of evolution and claim the freedom to these sub-individual units and uh, try to defend the, the rights, not of human rights anymore, but subhuman rights. The rights of the parts of the individual to be free from the brain, from the highest level of uh, the uh, organism, and the freedom of the desires, the freedoms, uh, the freedom for the body, the freedom for the physiolog uh, physiological feelings, uh, and uh, the possibility to to behave uh, of different part of the body uh, as they wish. For example, now our hands or our eyes or our uh, legs and the other organs are completely in the slavery of the brain. They are slaves of the brain and it is not absolutely democratic organization of the body or, or the individual. It's a kind of um, dictatorship. Dictatorship when the only one part of the body, the brain, dictates to the other parts what is good or what is bad, what they should do or what they shouldn't. So that is completely in, in, uh, unjust way to be uh, free, because this is limited freedom. That is a freedom in the some limits uh, and under control of some hierarchical, hierarchical instance. So the idea of the post-society uh, is based on the creation of something um, individual. When, for example, we could exchange different organs between the kind of market of organs, for example, exchange real hands against um, artificial hands because it could grasp better, for example, uh, or we could exchange the eye that is human eye um, is not uh, so performant as, for example, the eyes of different species of some eagles, for example. They, they, they see better. They, or, for example, if you exchange uh, human eyes against uh, uh, the eye of the owl you could see in the night. So uh, you could enlarge uh, your possibility and also you could obviously exchange the bad organ or insane organ, uh, ill organ against the new one. So uh, obtaining a new possibility and maybe you could divide genome of uh, the future, uh, future human being and to improve something inside of that you could make artificial artificial uh, entities that will be uh, free
from this repetition of the same body form, of the same uh, psychic organization of the people. You could enlarge the possibility of the life precisely. Uh, and so you, uh, you, you could uh, li liberate the body from the dictatorship of uh, uh, the, uh, the brain and uh, claim for democracy of the organs. The different organs could create a kind of parliament of the body and to take decision um, together, not uh, relying on the will of, of the brain. The brain um, could uh, be in error. So um, well, there, there, we need um, a testimonies of uh, and uh, uh, the ideas uh, of the other uh, participant of the uh, human constitution, and and so on. So there, uh, there is idea of transhumanist perspective, where we could uh, imagine cyborg, the clones, the uh, genetic engineering, uh, improve the, the idea to improve the, um, the nature of, of human species. Uh, it is obvious that the such form as gender, for example, is, uh, is becoming obsolete. You could choose your gender whenever you want and uh, uh, in, in any sense. Um, you could uh, undergo different kind of sexual operation, changing the gender any uh, time uh, when you are tired from being woman or, or man, so it is completely optional, but it is not only last uh, definition or, or, or last limit of the individual, because the fact to belong to the human species also is a kind of collective identity. That, and we should liberate individual from the belonging to the only one species, human. So uh, uh, the idea is to liberate individual from itself, from gender, from humanity, and from the idea of uh, unchangeable, constant nature of the individual. So we could suggest a kind of genetical experiments to enlarge, uh, the, uh, the, to create, for example, different species from the um, individual, human individual, post-human species, including chimeras, uh, kind of mermaids, and uh, uh, satyrs, silens, and, and different uh, imaginable uh, giants, ketakanheiros, uh, uh, hundred uh, hands beings uh, mentioned in the ancient Greek uh, mythology. So this kind of the post-society could be regarded as a fourth uh, derivative of ethnos when we, um, pro we go one step further from the uh, purely individualistic identity. This post-society or this society, uh, as uh, uh, French uh, French um, writer Genereux uh, has called it, this society, because society uh, presupposes a kind of association, unification, integration of the elements, and this society is a kind of uh, possibility to dissociate any kind of association, dissociate organic or historic or artificial state identities, collective identities, but also this society in the sense to dissociate the parts of the uh, human orga organism from themselves, to divide them and to exchange or uh, develop or make a progress in the genome. So that is theoretical perspective, how we could use ethno-sociology 
uh, beyond the limits of the global society is a uh, purely conceptual construction, this kind of fourth uh, identity, fourth uh, derivative of the ethnos. But if we regard philosophical development and achievement of postmodernism, and if we consider the successes of the scientists in the field of the biology, of uh, genetic, of um, uh, new kind of physio physiological researches, uh, and also some artistic creation, for example, of uh, the films of Quentin Tarantino, where there are um, different post-human uh, entities and uh, units acting uh, or with the uh, more or less uh, common uh, classical human uh, units, but uh, where, where the human units uh, are losing uh, are losing their um, normal uh, codes of behavior becoming um, more and more crazy, more and more um, uh, uh, drug addicts, and uh, transforming little by little something other than human. So, on the artistic way, uh, on the biological way, on the scientific way, on the philosophical way, uh, we could uh, we could uh, dream the possibility of uh, the um, creation of such post-society is not so uh, distant, not so far from us. Uh, if we uh, are making the reality check, we are in the transitional stage from the national society toward uh, global civil society, that is process of uh, globalization, but the next step uh, is uh, already more or less near to us. It's not so far, and uh, after the global society, uh, we could uh, imagine the horizons of the post society that uh, will mean the end of the man and the kind of post human or Post, uh, post individual, uh, post society. So it is a kind of something that awaits us in the near uh, future. So, in this situation, if we consider from the ethnosociologic point of view these uh, artificial construction of post-society, we could say that the identification and the equation between individual and the individual-based uh, civil society with the ethnos uh, up to the certain limits is valid here and the consideration of the possibility of the, tra of the shift to the uh, post-individual, post-society, because there, in this shift, in this change from the individual identity toward post-individual, individual identity, there will be, they will repeat the same process that was the main meaning of the transformation from ethnic society to the individualistic civil society. So ethnos being divided, split, uh, and being involved in the only, in, involuted in the one uh, individual unit, that was the, the meaning of the historical creation of the derivatives of the ethnos during the known history. And new history, new page of the history, of social history, 
uh, will be repetition of the same process, but on the basis of the destruction, uh, reconstruction of the individual. But that is uh, purely futuristic and logical and theoretical construction that is already uh, previsible in the some uh, particular branches of modern science, modern philosophy, and modern culture. But here we, uh, we have reached the limits of uh, our discipline, ethnosociology, uh, describing, we have described more or less all the possible kind of society where um, the ethnosociological methods is applicable and could give important scientific results uh, to study these societies from ethnosociological point of view. Now we at the end of the course and uh, we see how the human society uh, developing was developing through the uh, main stages you described. But, um, and, and we see that we, uh, if we look at the uh, current state of the uh, human society, we are staying at the, the uh, intermediate position between nation state and the global state and the global union, global society. But, uh, so if we, uh, if we look so, we see that the, the uh, structures of nation is, is still living now and uh, the, uh, uh, if we call so, the nation agenda is still in, 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 uh, in, in job, in, in, in life. But, um, if we, if we uh, do so, can we say, if we, if, we, if we regard this as the normal thing, that the uh, traditional nation is already in the past and the ethnic society already in the past, their agendas are no, uh, they, are, they are already dead. So we, now we have to do only with nation agenda and the global agenda. Is this right or so? Completely right. Uh, there, are only, there are only two agendas, national agenda and uh, globalist agenda. But what is important? Uh, that uh, very important, the, the sense or the meaning of the nation. The nation was created artificially uh, to hold together uh, the elements. Uh, they have nothing to do with each other normally, completely dispersed and completely uh, autonomous uh, elements. And also the nation, in the liberal sense, the sense, the meaning of the nation, was designed to prepare these individual um, units to live by themselves, to educate them to be individual. So the citizenship, civil society, uh, has its origin in the national society because the national society was the first matrix for education of the uh, wholly developed individual identity. So national agenda is working now only because this process is not considered to be finished. So there is something uh, that rests of ethnic identity, the rest of religious, of people's identity that are not uh, transformed enough in the individual, uh, individual identities. For example, in India, in China, in Arab world, in the third world, they are living the millions and the millions, billions, billions of people who um, have not individual identity. They are member of the national statehood, but they are normatively, con legally considered to be individuals by the law, by they, uh, uh, they lack their fully developed individualities. They are not uh, yet civil uh, enough to be considered 
re really individual soul, it is a kind of um, delay in the agenda of the enlightenment of the national statehood, and that is delay before coming to the global society. That is precisely what Francis Fukuyama uh, affirms in his last writings, that we could not uh, dismiss today the national states because they didn't finish, didn't uh, fulfill enough their, uh, their task, their, 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 uh, their goal, because they, we are living in the national states with the, identity, uh, with the individual identity, but it is a kind of normative and um, formal definition. And in majority of the modern society, there is no enough uh, elements of the civil society. So we could not destroy nations today. Precisely, it is uh, the opposite to what Fukuyama himself affirmed in the 90s, because after reconsidering what we, what we have today, after making reality check, he had himself discovered that many uh, national society, modern society, are not modern, not democra democratic, uh, and there is a considerable huge lack of individual uh, identity um, fully accepted and developed and responsible uh, in these, these societies. So, national society is exists and na national agenda exists only because uh, that the work, the great work of the preparation of the civil society on the global scale is not finished yet. And the other aspect of your question, uh, what uh, the ethnic or people's um, agenda, there is ethnos. There is ethnic society, there are ethnic society today, they exist as well as they exist, the uh, institution of the traditional society, pre-modern society, for example, religious society or ethnic group or um, high, um, high stra uh, stratificated uh, so socially societies, all that exists. And all that is not, uh, mm, uh, it is not changed from the pre-modern situation. So national society, national state uh, uh, has a, a big deal of work uh, in front of it, uh, above all in the non-European non -European, uh, area and zones of the world to transform its population in the sense of, of, of the civil right, uh, individual consciousness, and so on. And that is the reason why we, we uh, will not uh, have a global um, government, world government, uh, in the nearest future. So this work is not fulfilled uh, yet. So that is the reason why we have really national agenda and we have also global agenda because in the certain parts of the world, in the United States of America, in Western Europe, uh, this process of the creation of, of the civil society are more or less finished. So we have uh, civil society in the Western parts of the world and th these, these this society, civil society, could not be developed uh, by other way than by expanding itself on the global scale, because the next step is glo globalization of this situation. That is precisely where the um, clash of civilizations uh, um, appears on the global scale, because civilizations is something that is uh, different from Western civilization, and it is a, a kind of the, the uh, societies in delay, 
uh, and delay precisely of their transformation in the uh, transformation in the sense of creation of normally or Western type modern nations with the individual identities. So the civil civilization represents a kind of challenge to globalization. But uh, if we see uh, these two process, the globalization and the uh, uh, work of nation today that still have something to do with all these ethnic communities and uh, common uh, agenda of the religion societies. So uh, we can see some kind of uh, desynchronization because the global agenda uh, tells us that the nation is something artificial, something uh, uh, that has to be put in the past or thrown away because it uh, has own, own limits that, that must be overcome. But uh, the, uh, uh, the communities is uh, an object of the nation uh, work the, with um, collective identity that must be destroyed for the nation are looking for this uh, uh, criticizing of the nation and they don't believe in the nation at all today and uh, the, their uh, own ethnic groups are much more stronger in the nation state for example in the uh, France and the European Union because the, uh, the, even the nation state uh, today looks not so, not so solid because of this uh, Mm, so it's this desynchronization. I agree completely with that. And I think that uh, we are dealing with the, um, a kind of sociological uh, sociologic abstractions. So um, the Western society uh, in itself uh, is, uh, has reached the kind of creation of civil society in the next step for the Western society is global society so it is logical because all that is more or, or, or less em empirically evident in the Western society but dealing with the different types of society through emigration through um, presence of uh, ethnic or national society of non-European type inside of Western society uh, creates a problem because mm, theoretically in the West there is no more ethnic, religious, tradition or national identity. Only, only civil society, only individual identity, only ideology of the human rights. That it's kind of uh, uh, individualist uh, global identity. And that is a kind of norm of political correctness accepted in the West, uh, Western society as something taken for granted. For granted. So as uh, something existing and there, that is really exists. But the Western society considered to be universal. So what is achieved here it should be achieved elsewhere. So the idea is that any other society should repeat Western uh, way or in the history. So for the, the representatives of the other cultures and civilization, uh, it's strongly recommended to repeat uh, swiftly uh, European or Western example, follow with example and repeat the, the, the same experience. And the uh, conservation of ethnic identity or traditional religious identity is regarded as, as an obstacle, as a kind of uh, uh, some delay in this process and not the challenge. So it is considered to something that, that should be improved uh, but it should, it, it, uh, we, we, uh, they should insist because it's so obvious that uh, uh, human identity is the individual one, that everybody is invited to uh, take it as an axiom, an axiom uh, taken to take it as um, something as a global and absolute truth. So uh, the existence of persistent group of population inside of Europe, or organized on ethnic 
or religious uh, principles is a kind of nonsense for um, European. They could not not understand, they could not recognize its existence because there is there could not be ethnic identity in the so high developed Euro European society. It could not be. It's, it's something that could not be. It is unimaginable. It is a kind of, of, of dream. It's a kind of uh, uh, dream time. So uh, uh, ethnos or religious identity uh, should be exclusively individual affair and not collective affair. And that is the law of the Western society. And it is so obvious for the Westerners that they could not imagine something who think otherwise. If someone thinks otherwise, he doesn't think at all, but he should. They, 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 uh, there is a presumption. So there is a kind of nonsense that uh, should not be um, attacked or taken in consideration precisely because it's something devoid of the sense. So ethos doesn't exist. The ethos is uh, purely artificial creations for the European in the modernity. They don't recognize the ethnic identity as something organic. In present conditions, it, it is important to, to stress it, in present conditions, there could not be ethnic identity. Maybe in the past that, that was uh, that was different. So this uh, negation uh, to recognize the existence of problem creates more and more problem because uh, ethnic identities and the people's identity in the non-European societies uh, uh, exists and still exists and continues to exist. So that creates conceptual animal, uh, uh, anomaly, something, the, the kind of uh, the gap between, uh, be, between a normative state of thing, the things as they should be, and the realistic uh, way of thinking, uh, uh, how they are. And they are in the way they could not be, theoretically, for the uh, Europeans. So that, that really creates a kind of uh, desynchronization, as you have put it, in, in this sense. And that is the reason why ethnosociology is so important to understand this delay, this difference between society. Because if we uh, accept ethnosociology as the uh, relevant and important method to study ethnic processes, national process, process uh, the, the process, processes of the peoples of traditional society they, that are contemporary to us, not only in the, uh, in the history, but that, uh, that uh, are contemporary and that uh, um, continue to uh, develop in our situation, we could understand better the world we are living in.